Hello, and welcome to the Tournament Admin Entry Tutorial for the USBC Online Registration Portal. This tutorial will cover how a tournament administrator can input paper entry forms into the online registration system. First, we will start the process by logging in. The top right of the screen, you already see that I am logged in here. Typically, it will say log in. You'll put in your community login um, that you've submitted to the USBC team in order to start the process. So the first step here at the top will be selecting admin dashboard from this list of tabs. We will always select admin dashboard. And from here, we're going to reserve squads. Now in this, we're going to be use a training, using a training tournament. So it'll just be called training tournament. You won't see your tournaments here. When you are logging in, you will see your specific association events only, and you won't see any other associations events. You will not see the training tournament. Um, it will only be visibility of your own events. So we're going to select training tournament for the purposes of this tutorial. Now on this page, you'll see our calendar. Um, this is typical. It'll show up for all of your events. However, for the training tournament, we've selected multiple days and multiple weekends um, of participation. However, in your events, you will only see your specific weekends that are available for selection uh, that will be bolded here in black, as you can see here. So for the example, we are going to use December 5th. And we are going to bowl a team squad at 1 p.m. on December 5th. So we will go here to the quantity in the 1 p.m. selection and add one quantity and add. You'll always have to add to cart and you'll always get the instant feedback here at the top right of the screen. So for the doubles and singles, we're going to bowl that the next day. So we're going to go back to the calendar and select the 6th of December. And we are going to select um, our doubles and singles. So as you can see here, since these doubles and singles are linked, one quantity of doubles is also equal to two singles entries. So since it's a four person team, we're going to select two doubles and which will also equal four singles. And we're going to add that to the cart as well. And the all events is available at any time on any of the pages um, on any of the days. Uh, it's not required that you sign up for them on your team squad day or your doubles and singles day. It's not attached to a date since it is a virtual entry. So we're going to up that to four and add to cart. So once we have all of our entries in, we're going to go to review selection here at the bottom. And this is the captain information page. So the information that's required here is the captain information that sent in the entry form because uh, this ties their info to their email address and will also send them the automatic emails um, from USBC once their tournament entry is complete. So for here, we're going to put in a test captain and the entry email is going to be fake entry at bull.com. The coordinator information is not required. Obviously you see here it is optional. That is useful for the event that a tournament coordinator sends in multiple teams and they want to be able to see all of their rosters, um, but they're not necessarily the captain of all of those teams. So once this is all ready to go, we're going to select reserve now. Once we reserve now, these spots will be taken. They will be reserved and removed from the stock of available squads. The difference here is that in the admin portion, as a tournament manager, you can do this and reserve squads for someone that says, hey, we're going to send in a bunch of teams, but I don't have the rosters just yet, and I'm not ready to pay. This is an option. The captains, when they put in, the individual bowlers, when they put in their entry, they must pay before their entries are reserved. So we will select reserve now. And now we're going to get to the roster management. So this is the captain screen. You can see test captain and the fake entry at bowl.com. So if we're going to put in the team event first, we're going to find team event here. Test captain team one is the current team name. We can change that in a minute. But we're going to select reservation number. It's highlighted here in blue. And we are going to put in our team members. So this is the entry screen. We can change the squad for the entry, remove the entry from the squad, cancel but we're going to select manage roster. Here. As I said, we can change the team name. So we can go with USBC online reg one. And I am just for the sake of time, going to copy and paste some 
um, ID numbers that are current USB-C board members, um, just for the sake of this, and make sure you always press the plus sign. And we are gonna see, we have Josie Barnes here. We're gonna add Dennis Hacker, Liz Culkin, and Jay Derman. Now the averages currently aren't auto-populating. There is no average verification that goes on in the online system. That is all taken care of once we get it to WinLabs. However, we do wanna put in the averages that are written down on the paper entry form as a lot of times there are division-based tournaments um, and this would assign them to the correct division. So we're gonna do 220 for everyone. Make sure that's all filled out, looks good. On this screen, you can also change the lineup. So if we wanted to move Josie Barnes from the first position to the anchor position, you can use these up and down arrows. We'll just move her down. And now she is the anchor for this team. The captain can come in after the registration is complete and make any changes as well. They will get that automatic email and they can make changes to their rosters and their positions as well. So for this, we're going to save the changes. And now to go back and do our doubles and singles, we're gonna go right here to the captain details and select view captain. Scroll down, same concept for doubles and singles. We have to go with the reservation number. So the first doubles and singles team, let's select reservation number. Once more time, manage roster. And now sometimes there will be a drop down, and they will be selected from here in the drop down. Um, just for the sake of time, we will do that. Sometimes you may have to put in the ID numbers one more time. But right now, we're going to select Dennis Hacker and Jay Derriman to both doubles together. Make sure you still always are pressing the plus marks. The averages have been pulled over. This is not always the case. Uh, the majority of the time, it does pull the averages over from what you put in the team event squad screen. Um, however, you always want to make sure that the averages here uh, are verified and match the ones that are submitted on the paper entry form. We will save our changes. Notice that the team name is auto-generated for the bowler's last names. The two bowlers on the doubles team is their last names. We're gonna go back to view captain one more time. And do the second set of doubles. We're gonna select reservation number again. Manage roster. and select our other two from the availability dropdown, Josie and Liz. And again, they pulled their averages over, but make sure that that is correct and consistent with what is on the paper entry form. We save our changes. Now we're gonna go do our all events. So all events is slightly different. We still have to go back to view captain. However, there is no reservation number tied to the all events since it is not a bold event. Um, it's not a, it's what's considered a virtual event. It's not tied to a certain squad or time. So we will just go over here on the same screen and just select where it is blue bold all events here. On this screen, we will be able to select our bowlers from the drop down. Make sure they're all there. $10 due for each. And we're going to save the changes. Difference on the all events screen when virtual entries are saved it doesn't kick you to another screen. So you just have to simply select back to captain details. And now we are going to go ahead and pay for the events. So in order to pay for the events, we're gonna select these white boxes here on the left. And it's gonna tell us what we owe. The captain's balance is $340 and we are about to pay $340. Most of these paper entry forms will come in via cash and check. So we're gonna select the cash and check option for this tutorial. And notice that the cash and check option was not available until we checked those white boxes. So for this, we will just select check, put in our check number. This is for our own documentation purposes. So you can always have some recall um, in a payment history that you can look back on. In the notes here, we will say received, 1221 from Josie. And that information is saved to the entry so you can go back and check just in case there's any instances 
uh, of money not processing or if a captain has a, a question or concern um, with where their money went. So we will save. Once we click save, the entry will be paid. It will be counted as paid in the system. There is no balance due at this point. Also, which just happened, an email has been generated to the team captain uh, that has indicated the entry and the payment are complete. And yourself as the tournament director, the copy email that has been set up in the tournament management has been blind copied on the email as well. So you will always get every entry that goes through the system. You will see when they come in, who is paid, um, and you can check their rosters that way. This is the completion of the tutorial. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at associationservices at bowl.com. Give us a call and just let us know how we can help. We appreciate the time.